Am I the a-hole stories? Update, am I the a-hole for not telling my wife that I am dying? Original story. Male, 31 here. For the past 15 years, I've been dealing with a medical condition that requires constant medication and consistent doctor's visits. I had always been projected to live until 50-60-ish. However, a recent complication has cut that down to 12 months, 16 at best. In about 10 months, my condition should start getting a lot worse. After 12 months, I'll essentially be living in the hospital. I am married of 4 years, no kids. I haven't had the heart to tell my wife the news. I don't even know how. We always knew I'd die younger than I wanted to, but we never expected it to be this soon. As much as I know, I should tell my wife, I don't want my last year to be plagued with an impending doom. My wife and I have always talked about living abroad somewhere, maybe Australia, but we've never found the time or money to do so. I've been saving up to go to graduate school, however, I don't see much point in that now. So, here's my idea, take some of that money, and take my wife to Australia for a few months, and enjoy the time together. I have a job I can work remotely from anywhere, and she has a job that she can easily find work anywhere. We can work part-time, and enjoy our time together. When we get back, or maybe towards the end of it, I will break the news to her. I just wouldn't want the trip to be ruined for us by constant reminders of me dying. I know my wife, and she's very emotional, to the point where I feel like she will be crying every day and not enjoying herself. I want this memory to be a good one for her, and not plagued by my time ticking down. Am I the a-hole for putting off telling her I am dying? Note, I have life insurance that will take care of her, so I am not too worried about spending this money now on this trip. And I plan on talking to her about a sperm bank just in case she decides she wants my kids in the future, as well as premise birthday cards and other things for her to have. Top comments before we read the update. Oh my, as a wife, I would be so livid if my husband knew he was dying and didn't tell me. Of course, I would be devastated too. That's so much emotion to feel all at once. I would want to know and I think any spouse would want to know too. Not the a-hole, but holy crap, tell her. You'd want her to tell you. Your wife isn't stupid. You spend a bunch of money you were supposed to be saving to go on a trip, she'll know something is up and that will probably make her worried anyway. Still go on the trip though. No a-holes here, but you should tell her. This really sucks and I'm so sorry that you are facing this, however, if you don't tell her, she will forever look back at the year you spent pursuing your dreams in Australia bitterly, and with hurt. I'm sure it will be an emotional year if you tell her but at least you give her the opportunity to really savor the next year and hang on to all the happy moments for years to come. No a-holes here. What a crappy situation, and I'm so sorry for you. By all means, tell her. Make this last bit of time count. Spend time just enjoying her. I know you mentioned life insurance, etc. but make sure she knows every detail of all finances, where all investments are, all passwords, make sure she's the beneficiary of things, if you want. Title all cars and houses in her name beforehand so it's not something she had to wrangle with later on her own. Again. So sorry for the circumstance. You're the a-hole. You should tell her. It would kill me to know my husband is going to be dead in 10 to 16 months, but I would want to be able to have that time to drop everything else, and make the most out of that little time I have left. I wouldn't want to take one second for granted. If you don't tell her, that memory of that trip will be forever tainted for her. Her memory of you will be forever shaded in the haze of betrayal and deceit. You're dying. That sucks. That's awful. But when it's over. It's over for you. She has to live on afterwards and mourn you. Let her mourn your life with you, and go through all those stages with you, so it's not a big shock at the end. You're the a-hole. My mom and dad hid that she was dying from us. I love my parents but I have nothing but resentment towards my father and my dead mother for keeping it from us, my siblings and I. I'll never forget the look on both of my brother's faces when we accidentally found out. My dad has never apologized. All he says, is he was following my mom's request. It upsets me typing this out. Please, don't do that to your wife slash family. Tell her ASAP. Oh, and don't think she won't know right away when you suggest a sudden months long vacation to Australia, out of the blue, with the money you were saving up. And now for the update. Hey all. I wasn't sure if I was going to make this update, but things are getting gloomier, and I feel that I owe you guys the closure you deserve for all the help you gave me, as well as the multiple news stories lol. Although I didn't respond much, due to everything being so new and overwhelming, 
I want each of you to know that I read every single comment and message, multiple times, over the past year and a half. I did end up telling my wife, soon after my post. She took it rough, as expected. It ruined me to see her that way, but I knew that I needed to tell her. She did enjoy reading through the original thread though, as many of you had heartwarming thoughts and messages. We took the time that we needed to ensure that she would be set up as best as possible. Following that, we went and spent the best four months of my life in Australia. The experience was amazing, and I couldn't have asked for a better dying wish. We came back just in time for COVID. Honestly, I was scared to death, and still am. But somehow, I've lasted this long. I've lost much of my strength, and hospice has come in to set up the house and ensure that I am comfortable enough to die. I had thought that I would be dead by now, so it is hard to complain about getting a little extra time. I've left a large collection of greeting cards in possession with a friend, birthdays, first anniversary without me, remarriage, children's birth and birthdays, if she uses my sperm. I didn't tell her about any of these, just because some of these events aren't guaranteed. But I know that they can help if the time comes around. Overall, I'm content, about as content as I can be. There's a lot of things I would have done differently in life if I had known this would happen, but that's unfortunately out of my control. However, I do know that I did the most I could have done with the remaining time I was given. I am just glad that I had time left while I still had my health, as I know that many aren't as lucky. Thanks again for all of your help. I'll answer any questions you guys have, so long as it isn't personally identifiable, which includes my medical information, as my town paper was thoughtful enough to write an article about me. Just be patient please, even typing for long periods of time gets painful. Now for the top comments. Wow. I wish you and your wife all the best. Your love for her will always live on. Thank you, I am hoping so. Wow I'm so sorry. I don't want to be an a-hole but are you afraid? How does one handle looking death literally in the face? I can't imagine all that you're going through. I'm so sorry. I'm happy you spent those 4 months with your wife. It sounds like you're handling everything as best as you can. I wish I could say more comforting words, but I'm at a loss and I'm so sorry. Definitely afraid, but less afraid than I would have thought I would have been 16 months ago. My biggest internal emotions are the regrets of how differently I would have lived my life if I had somehow known I would have only lived this long. Man, this really has put things in perspective for me I had a friend lose his wife this morning and coming across this makes me realize how life is so short. I will make sure to make a bucket list in your honor and check off the things I'd like to do. I hope the hospice nurses are wonderful and keep you comfortable. The only thing I would caution you on, is the future greeting cards. I had a friend who did this for his partner after he died, and while it was incredibly sweet and kind, it also stopped his partner from moving on. Every time she received a card it reopened all of her grief over losing him. I'm not saying don't do it, but just maybe talk to the friend who is holding onto them and ask them to use their discretion about whether or not to go through with giving them to her. It might be easier to just leave a single letter that says everything you want her to know. Also, as a kid whose father died when I was 9 months old, please leave a video for them. Just for them. It took me over 30 years to find the single letter my father had left for me that my mother had hidden. And all I ever wanted was to hear what his voice sounded like when he said my name. To see what his face looked like when he said he loved me. That crap can leave a hole in your heart bigger than anything you can find to fill it. Thanks for the advice, that's really good to know. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for naming my biological daughter as my only beneficiary with respect to life insurance? I'm 55 with one biological daughter and one daughter with no relation to me. There, in order, 22 and 8. My wife passed two years ago from lung cancer, and on her deathbed, she revealed I was not the father of the second child, another man was. I confirmed it months after the fact with a paternity test. I don't know who the father is, she was mostly incoherent in telling me, so it's safe to assume I am the only father figure she has and will ever have. My biological daughter knows, but the other one does not. I'll admit I have a hard time with it sometimes, but I try not to let it get to me. I treat them more or less equal when it comes to fatherly duties since I hold her innocent in this. I'm getting life insurance policies in place and decided to name my biological daughter as sole beneficiary. This is not like a will where I need to give a token amount to anyone. At least not where we live. I have no other assets so my will is threadbare, there's maybe $10,000 at stake and whoever wants it can have it. Why? When my daughter was 21. She expressed interest in setting me free and adopting the non-biological daughter. 
I can't provide such an amazing life for either child, we're more or less destitute as is. She has a nice career and wants to move elsewhere because things aren't so good here. She said she wants to bring her sister along with her to give her the life I never really could. They'll both still visit but their priority needs to be setting their lives up to be the best they can be, which isn't a possibility here. I want to name my eldest a sole beneficiary, because she can do more with it for both of them. She will be the primary caretaker, no one else. It's not a matter of I'm giving money to one child to spite the other, I think giving it to the one child will make the most difference. Would I be the a-hole, am I the a-hole for my decision? Now for the top comments. In that situation, you're not the a-hole. Your older daughter clearly has shown you that she's a responsible person with a good head on her shoulders, and the money will benefit them both. That being said, would it really hurt to put some in trust for the younger daughter? It wouldn't have to be a large amount, and it would show her that you were thinking of her. I'd also suggest writing a letter for each of them that they can read when you eventually pass, so that they know that they're both still in your heart. Some part of me wants nothing to do with my youngest. It hurts a lot knowing my wife was unfaithful. I can't blame the child because she has done nothing wrong, but I can't help my feelings sometimes. This way those feelings are abated and she can still benefit. It's hard to put into words my thoughts on it. I thought I did the best I could do. You're the only father she's ever known and you can't find a replacement. She's too young to understand any of this. You were in it for better or worse with your wife, and the courts wouldn't let you off the hook, because they don't know who the bio father is. Are you going to break your vows like your wife did? That poor girl lost her mom and now her dad is crapping out on her too and you're putting your hurt over her lifetime of abandonment issues, that she will likely never forgive you for. How are so many people glossing over this fact? You are her dad in every way that matters. I feel pretty conflicted. Disgusted by you and your wife, sorry immensely that you're a widow because of a terrible horrendous disease, and proud of your oldest for being willing to step up. The only way to not make you the supreme a-hole here is to move with your daughters to her better job and start fresh with your family. If she was an infant, sure, make other choices, but she's not, and you are legally on the hook and morally incredibly so. Don't blame the man for not wanting to raise a child that he thought belonged to him. In this situation everyone wants to blame the man. Put the entire blame on that selfish a-hole mother. She dropped this bomb on him before she left, and now OP has to pick up the pieces. Please don't punish the child for the actions of her mother. I think you need some therapy to process your, understandably, complex emotions around this. But excluding the younger girl from an inheritance will crush her, she will feel and know that you only were around because you had to be and not because you wanted to be, and that's something that will ruin her life. How about some empathy for the kid that had no choice in this situation? Get some therapy, please. Both your kids deserve that, and you deserve peace. Not the a-hole. In most places the younger daughter would need someone to manage the money until she's of age. You're not cutting her out, you're giving it to someone that will be taking care of your daughter. No a-holes here. This seems like a fair and well-reasoned decision. I think you're stressing a lot about this, and carrying a lot of guilt that you should let go. You're caring for both of your daughters in the best way you can. That is very admirable, and when she is old enough, I think your youngest will understand that. So. Your second daughter is transitioning to your granddaughter. With that in mind, no a-holes here. Your oldest will likely name her sister slash daughter as equal beneficiary as any bio kid she goes on to have. You're skirting into the a-hole territory, by saying you have no relationship to your second daughter. I'm giving you a pass since in the context filling in bio relationship erases the issue, but it could easily be a judgment in the negative when taken with everything else. And that's it for this video guys. If you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. Turn the notification on to get updated on my latest posts. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.